right now the market has been pricing a lot of cuts, more cuts than I think the central bank will be able to deliver in the next year. And when this uncertainty clears up in the next couple of months, I think the carry trade will come back. Hi, and welcome to What's in Play. On today's program, we're going to talk about Hungary. So I have invited Yuri Sussman back to the show. Yuri, you are an emerging market strategist and the author of a monthly series called EM Dynamics at header.com. Welcome, Yuri. Nice to have you back on the show. Hi, Sophie. It's good to be back. Thank you for having me. Great. So first of all, we're going to talk about Hungary. Hungary is a country landlocked in Central Europe. About almost 10 million people live there, and Hungary has been a member of the European Union for almost 20 years. Can you begin by telling me why Hungary is a topic of interest for you right now? Well, Hungary, like many other countries, is currently dealing with high inflation. We've seen that story around the world, but in Hungary, it's particularly acute. So inflation went all the way to around 25% at its peak at the end of last year. The and highest in Europe, right? It's the high, the highest inflation in the EU and one of the highest in the emerging market world. So it's a big problem. And But in Hungary, it's, it's a particularly interesting story because Hungary actually went uh, from fighting deflation a few years ago, around 2015, 2016, and now it's fighting very high inflation. So there is some very interesting long-term trends there. So why is that? It's, it sounds pretty wobbly. And I guess Hungary, as every other country on the planet, has also been in some way affected by COVID or geopolitical unrest, all the things that happened in recent years. Indeed, it's fighting some of the same forces. But Hungary has been going through a number of transitions over the past 15 years or so. If we, we just go back to just before the global financial crisis, Hungary was building up a lot of debt, both households and companies were accumulating debt. And a lot of that debt was in foreign currency terms. And, you know, the the government was running a fiscal deficit. And altogether, that combined to create a very wide current account deficit. So after the global financial crisis, Hungary went through its first phase of transition. The private sector began to save a lot and the fiscal balance also consolidated to an extent. Basically, Hungary went on a multi-year long period of deleveraging. So when we speak of deleveraging, basically the companies and households, they, they began to pay off their debts. And this deleveraging occurred not just in relative terms, I meaning relative to GDP, it actually happened in absolute terms. So, so just in euro terms, the stock of lo outstanding loans was declining. That's a very severe sort of deleveraging that occurred. And on the flip side, what happened is it brought... Hungary's current account balance into surplus. So if, uh, it went from 7 to 8% of GDP deficit into 2, 2 to 3% surplus. And so the combination of that, this deleveraging current account surplus, it really pushed inflation down dramatically. And we, as mentioned in 2015, 2016 period, we actually saw Hungary fighting inflation. The inflation dipped into negative territory. So now we are back with the highest inflation rate in EU in Hungary. As an emerging market expert, what is your take on the current situation right now in Hungary? What can investors sort of dive into there? So now we're basically, the deleveraging cycle was completed a few years ago, just before the pandemic. In fact, the loans were starting to pick up again and inflation actually started to hit back to target. And we got into a situation where before the pandemic, the you know the economy was starting to relever and the fiscal became a lot more loose. So we, the government, the Orban-led government, started to kind of play around with the fiscal during election years. You know, first in 2017, 2018, it loosened its fiscal dramatically. It tightened afterwards, but then in 2021, 2022, it again loosened the fiscal. Now the fiscal it was actually already loose during the pandemic. This was part of the stimulus in order to help to prevent the economy going into a depression. And both the central bank and the government really loosened their policy to help with the pandemic problems. But effectively, the government, its policy remained loose even after the peak of the pandemic, and it remains loose to the day. And, and so the central bank had to really tighten dramatically. Just so I understand, does this mean that they have 
a high inflation but still have cheap money? So the central bank is now, you know, even though it started to tighten the policy much earlier than uh, other developed countries, it started tightening policy around mid-2021 in line with many other emerging markets. It, it still was doing a lot of the unconventional policy that is actually more characteristic of the developed world, asset purchases. So it was buying government bonds, it was buying mortgage-backed securities, and, and which was you know meant to provide liquidity during the pandemic, the stress periods of pandemic. Mm-hmm. But they continued with that perhaps too long. And in hindsight, the central bank admits that it was a mistake to continue these purchases for so long. And so even as they were tightening or raising the interest rates, they were still they still continued this unconventional policy for a few months. and But ultimately, they did manage to, to tighten and they brought the policy rate to very high levels, to the highest in the EU and all the way to 18% at its peak of last year. So yes, we have a divergence here where the central bank has tightened yeah. dramatically and the government is still has very loose fiscal Okay, that's extraordinary. How can you as an investor position yourself here? Or what are sort of the obvious traits that you would be interested in the, in looking at? So Hungary, because uh, when the central bank tightened the policy and hiked the, the rates to 18%, it, it was meant to stabilize the currency, which was selling off at the time, you know, uh, as well as fight inflation. And it achieved that it became a very attractive carry trade for investors. And since end of last year, basically, it became a popular care trade. And that still goes on now? And it still goes on now, but the central bank has been starting to unwind some of these emergency measures. It's, cu- it's starting to cut the marginal policy rate, bring it back to around 13% over the next few months. And what do you see opportunities now then? Well, I think what I would say what I would say is that I think the carry trade is a little, becoming a little bit wobbly right now because even though the interest rates are still high, there's a lot of uncertainty about what will happen in the next few months and you know the fiscal still remains very loose. So, I think the carry trade will come back. I think right now the market has been pricing a lot of cuts, more cuts than I think the central bank will be able to deliver in the next year. And when this uncertainty clears up in the next couple of months, I think the carry trade will, will come back. And we're talking about bonds here, right? Well, the carry trade is more of an effects trade. So it's basically what the carry trade is buying the currency and holding the currency and collecting the interest rate that you get, the, the very short-term interest rate. Yeah. The bonds, also, which, was, which also became a popular trade in Hungary this year, and because the rates were so high, the central bank was bound to cut them at some point. It has been cutting them. And so the bonds have been you know, a, a good trade. But the market now is pricing a lot more cuts going forward than I think the central bank will be able to deliver. So I would probably stay away from the bonds at the moment. So what would you look for? You know, you if you want to stay away from the bonds, is there anything of interest to investors to look for right now? Or should we just sort of take a step back? I would take a step back right now and I would wait for an opportunity around the September time to step back into the carry trade when, you know, the central bank is expected to complete its unwind of the emergency measures and that, that the interest rates should stabilize. And I think once you have some of this clarity around the fiscal as well policy to come back, then it'll be the carry trade will become an interesting trade again. And how about a little longer term, maybe looking into next year, is that too far out? Well, next year, I think what we need to see is what happens to the inflation. This inflation has been, while it came down from its highs, it's still above the target and it's still quite sticky, particularly the services and non-tradable goods inflation that are less driven by the currency markets. So what we need to look at next year, how much of that disinflation will continue going into next year. And with the central bank, if the central bank manages to maintain a hawkish tightening bias, and the government starts to consolidate the fiscal, which I would expect it to do given the elections are out of the way, the bond trade will start to get interesting again. And I think that's when we might have kind of in the next couple of years, there will be room to to cut more and uh, the bonds can rally further. Great. Thanks, Yuri, and thank you for coming on today and talking about Hungary. I'll hopefully see you soon again on the show. Thank you, Sophie. It's good to be on the show. Mm-hmm.